Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and you're watching the Crash Course in My End Class Series, Section 5, Tearing Objects. In this video I'm going to talk about uh, how to make your end claw terrible, how to get some resistance up, and how to recreate some of the videos you see in the backdrop. So let's get started. Alright, I'm going to start with the scene file. It's pretty basic. All it has is a cone to use as a spike and the plane to use as the cloth. So uh, to get things started I'm going to actually make the plane my cloth and the spike a, a rigid object. So now when I push play, extend the timeline a little bit, when I push play it's going to wrap around the spike. But we want the spike to tear through the cloth so I'm going to start that over and I'm going to select the object and constraints, terrible surface. Now you can actually have the entire object the terrible surface or components but in this case for example purposes I'm just going to have the entire object. So now when I push play it's going to fall on the spike and when it hits you'll see right in the middle here it's starting to tear and rip through the surface. Now, there are not very many cases in terms of cloth. I'm going. I would actually have the entire surface terrible, and uh, I'll show you why here in the next example. But you can kind of see as it uh, goes down the spike, because it's thick on the bottom, it's uh, stretching and ripping the center ring right there. Next, I'm actually going to use the trampoline four-point uh, example for the next terrible object. So I'm going to create a sphere, scale it up, bring it on up, and I'm going to key the movement. So I'm going to push Shift W to key my translates. Go to frame 15, move it on down. Shift W, key the trans, uh, transforms. So now when I push play, it moves down pretty quickly. And you can see in the back, the uh, trampoline itself is actually still rather clothy. So now I'm going to make that into a rigid mesh. So now this, the ball, should actually interact with the trampoline. But because it's actual physical animation, it's actually going to go through it. Or it should theoretically go through it. No, it didn't. Isn't that wonderful? So now we're going to make this entire object a terrible mesh. Here's the uh, shelf button right here. And now you're going to see a downside of actually making an entire object a terrible mesh. So when it plays, you can already see the effects right off. So I'm just going to stop right there. I want to show you a couple of the uh, effects. You can see in the corners kind of separated and uh, left the main base of the cloth and if I zoom in close you'll see that it's because of the component to component uh, transform that that uh, happened and when I go over here you can see it kind of shattering breaking and falling apart almost as if it was glass so component uh, doing the entire object if you're doing glass which I'll do another example later isn't a bad idea but at this current point in time doing an entire object is not such a good idea. So I'm just going to rewind and how to make it actually work how I want it to is go to the top view, go to sub object and select the vertices around that sphere. So uh, that'll do. And I want to make that terrible. So now when I push play that object itself tore through still shattering but I want to get to that fix here shortly but it tore through instead of create, uh, destroying the entire object to fix that we're actually going to go into uh, the dynamic that is created in this case it's going to be the fifth one because it got uh, one through four for each corner the fifth one is the tearing dynamic and what we're going to be working with is the glue strength which is right here it's at point one. If it's at one, it's not going to move at all. If it's at point two, you'll see the how strong and how powerful the glue strength is. So I want to uh, do the animation. 
is still tearing, but you can see it didn't almost completely explode. You got a few uh, artifacts right there, so I'm going to raise it to 0.3. Push play. Tore through it. One artifact, but it's still stuck. But you can see how raising it by one tenth just completely how powerful uh, it made the, the tearing object. Alright, next I'm going to do a combination of dynamics and end dynamics. In this scene I have a box, which is a wedge, and I have a plane, or not a, a plane, but a box, very thin with uh, sections. And that is all I currently have, so I'm going to rename this law. Rename this wedge. So first thing I want to do is I want to have this work with dynamics. Move that up a little bit and have it actually work with gravity. So I want to go to dynamics tab. I want to create an active body and I'm going to give it gravity. So now it falls on its own. Next I'm actually going to go to the end cloth uh, tab. Make that a rigid body. I want to make this an active body. Push play. It's going to slow down quite a bit but you can see everything is still working properly. Next I actually want to make this stationary so I'm going to go vertex select the side I'm going to uh, create a transform constraint which is right here in the tab so now when I push play you can see the wedge right here slowly falling towards the uh, cloth and when it hits when I go to perspective view so you can get a, another shot another view when it hits it starts to interact with the cloth now I'm going to make this part terrible. So I want to go back to the front view. Vertex. Select that entire section. Terrible object. Now when I push play, it's going to be a lot slower. But you'll see it, uh, the wedge slowly falling to the cloth right here. Hit the object that's tearing and finally rip it. Now because the glue strength is low you'll want to see sections fly off like this but that's something you can tweak another time at your uh, discretion. Alright, this example is going to be a slight variance from the previous one. Instead of the wedge falling, I'm going to have it swing and rotate using dynamics as well. So I'm going to select the object in the dynamics tab, create active. I'm going to make it affected by gravity. Now I'm going to create a hinge. Move the hinge to where I want it to swing, rotate it. Now when I push play, affected by gravity swinging down and goes to the cloth. So now I'm going to make this in the end cloth tab. A ragged object. Now when I push play it's going to slow down a lot because it has to do with uh, a bunch of stuff. And when it hits it should smack into it and push it back. Like a so. Now I'm going to make the uh, selected uh, selected section terrible, something like that. That's enough for me. Make it tearing. And now when I push play, it'll swing down very slowly, swing swing down, but it'll swing down nonetheless. Just wait for it. There we go. Hits the cloth and rips it. Bam! Must have missed a vertex back there. But yeah, that's that. But the next video is going to be the last video of the uh, section. It's going to be a couple of examples. One of the examples is going to be how I did the balloon, and the other example is going to be creating a float. So. Have fun.